there, everybody. So I saw on Twitter that some math teachers were making little quizzes and assessments on Desmos, and then on one screen, it would give the score. And I thought, that's genius, because what I was doing was I had to look at every student's screen uh, for every class and just kind of see what, you know, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? And then I'm like, keeping score on, uh, you know, a paper spreadsheet while I'm looking at my screen. Uh, and it was a big pain. So um, I think at this point, we know enough um, different types of questions that you could start to make a quiz. And I want to show you how that's done. So hang with me here, of course, because I'm relatively new and I'm learning this as I go. Um, so again, if there's something I'm doing that could be done easier, if anybody notices, that would be great if you could, you know, let us all know that. So what I did is I started to set this up. I have, um, so here's screen one. It just says, this is a quiz and it will not have partial credit. So it's either right or it's wrong. Um, partial credit, I guess would have to come in some other time. So the types of questions that I have, I have a math input question, real easy. What's two plus three? Here, uh, we talked about movable points to make a slope. We have a card sort and we have a multiple choice question. And then this last screen, I would hide from students. So I would use the pacing in the Desmos activity to make sure they couldn't see the screen. And this will tell them the score. Okay. so. Let's get started here. So the, we're going to put in a note component on the student score and we're going to go into the computation layer. And this is where I will start to build the code. So I'm going to have first a bunch of when otherwise statements. So when they get it right, they'll get this many points. Otherwise it's wrong and they get zero unless you want to give them some credit for just breathing. Uh, that's completely up to you. All right, so I'm going to start. My first question happens to be on screen two. So I'm going to call uh, my first variable two. Spelled out T-W-O. Um, so this, when, now let me go back to screen two and see what I have there. So screen two, I kind of typed it in already, but I want this answer to numerical value to be five. Okay, so I'm gonna just retype that in screen six here. So screen six, I'm going in here. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses. I don't, they're not necessary, but I want them just for visual separation. So variable, nope, it was answer. Answer to the numeric value has to be five. Then they got it correct. So when they put five in for answer two, I'll give them one point. That's how many points I think that question is worth. Otherwise, they get nothing. Okay. Screen three. When? Now let me go look at screen three and see what we have there. Screen three. Oh, these were the movable points. So I already put it in here. Um, now the reason is because... I also want to see the item analysis. I want to see the check marks and the X's on my dashboard, um, like at a glance, but I also want to have the score screen. So I did put this in so the teacher will get some feedback here on whether it's right or not. So I'm just going to copy it right here. I'm going to copy that. So in graph three, if the number M is negative 1.5, then they've plotted the correct slope. So I'm going to put that here for screen three, paste it. Now that one took a little more thinking rather than just adding two plus three. So I'm going to say that one's worth three points. So if they get it right, they'll get three points. Otherwise, nothing. Now you could get a little bit crazier. You could say when this happens, they get three points. Or, you know, if they had positive 1.5, you could give them partial credit for that. So you would just do, um, you, you would, uh, when this happens, this, otherwise this, otherwise that. I, I can't think off the top of my head right now, but it can be done. All right, screen four. 
when this happens. I do want to show you screen three that I do have it that the check mark will be given if they put a five. Uh, but again, students get absolutely no feedback here. Ooh, screen four, um, this card sort, I did put the answer key in, so that's already there. Um, and I called this sort four. Now you can go here and grab it. Um, th that wasn't necessary, I don't need that. Let me get rid of that, that's just silly. Because I have the answer key in, it will give me the check mark on my dashboard. All right, so sort four, I want it to match the key. So sort, there it is, sort four, if it matches the key. Oh, three points. How about two? Those are easy questions. Otherwise, nothing. Now, you can set it up that it doesn't have to match the entire key to get points. You could go with how many are correct to do that. Um, and we'll take a look at that. All right, and then screen five, my last one here. Again, I don't have any coding on this one uh, because I picked the right answer, so it will tell me that, but I need to name this multiple choice five. All right, and the fourth one is correct. So here we go. When MC5 is selected, the fourth one, Mm, that was easy because I just told them. So they're only getting one point there. So you, you get to pick these. How many points is each question worth and all of that? Okay, so there are four questions on this quiz or whatever you want to call it. Now I want to display the score. So the content of this note will be, and here you can write whatever you want. I'm going to write this student's score is... And now we'll add up all these together to see what the score is. So we need the numeric value. Here's where I hope I don't mess up. So we're gonna do that dollar sign curly bracket thing again. And we want the numeric value of what? Now we need like quotation marks and dollar signs and all of this stuff. I'm honest, I'm gonna be honest here. I have no idea what it means. Um, I found this on, um, Help me out here. Daniel Grubbs actually helped me on the forum in um, the computation layer. So shout out to him uh, for helping me with this. So quotes, dollar sign, curly brackets. I'm going to do the first variable here, which is two. Close them. Plus, now I'm going to do that again for three, four, and five. Eh, eh, three plus Mm -hmm. I find making the noises really helps. And now I'm not making the noises. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Now I got to close everything up. So I need the, the closing of those quotation marks. Then I need the closing of that parenthesis. Then I need the closing of those curly brackets. Ah, oh, crap. What am I missing? That? No. This. <laughs> okay. Let's check it out. Cross your fingers, would you? Okay, so right here. Oh, nice. <laughs> I have a parenthesis there. Where did that come from? What did I do? This? Maybe. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so right now, this, this student didn't answer anything, so they're, they've got no points. If I go here and I pick the right answer, you can see that the score has changed. The teacher can see on the dashboard that that particular question was correct. Um, let's try, let's do another one here real quick. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. Three plus three is six. And now you can see the teacher will know everything's correct there. And then, oh, right there, student score is three. Okay, so that's how you can make a self-grading uh, an assessment. You probably will want to not let the students see the score screen, but maybe you do. Um, you know, they, uh, 
maybe it's not an assessment. Maybe you just want them to see the score, but maybe not necessarily which ones are right and wrong, and they have to go back and, and check that out. So, again, I hope I was helpful. If not, at least I'm helping myself. I'm learning it a little bit quicker now that I'm making the videos. All right, everybody. See you next time.